Okay, now let's look at the other situation here with the other asymptote that we have. So if we approach uh, the limit as x approaches 2 from the left, we're coming this way, and you can see that my limit is going upward. So this is going to equal infinity. Now for the other part, or the other side, the limit as x approaches 2 from the right, well, that means I'm coming this way. And notice that my limit of f of x is approaching negative infinity. Okay? Lastly, if I wanted to evaluate, and I'm going to write this one large, if I wanted to evaluate the limit as x approaches 2 off f of x, that means I'm approaching from both sides. Unfortunately, as we can see, that is approaching infinity if we approach on the left. And if we approach from the right, that's approaching negative infinity. Therefore, this limit does not exist. Okay? So I hope there's uh, no questions there. If there are, feel free to email me. But I think evaluating limits... Oh, sorry. That happens a lot. Evalu evaluating limits, not too difficult. Actually, let me get my red pen out again. There we go. So now, let's look at this example here. So we're going to graph the function f of x equals 1 over x squared minus x using some sort of graphing device with a window, uh, negative 1 to 2 by negative 10 to 10. And then we're going to find the following limits. Anytime you see a situation like this where they're giving you a window or they're giving you window dimensions, these are intervals. And that's going to be my x interval. And this is going to be my y interval. So I'm going to show you how to do this uh, using Desmos. So let me go ahead and get out the Google machine here. And I think, yep, there's Desmos right there. So I don't need the sign in or anything for this. We're just going to go ahead and graph. So we're going to type in uh, 1 over, and what was it again? x squared? Yeah, x squared minus x. Now, here's our, here's our graph. To change this in Desmos in terms for the window that they want, you're going to go over here to the toolbar. You're going to uh, click on the tool. I'm going to just change my display so it's a little bit brighter. I'm going to get rid of a lot of this stuff because I think this is just very busy. So uh, the minor grid lines, let's get rid of that. I like the axis numbers. I like the grid. Down here where it says x-axis, this is where we're going to change it. So we're going to make it negative 1 to uh, 2. And then the y-axis, we'll make it what they want, which is negative 10 to 10. All right. So that's what they want in terms of a picture. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring this into uh, into our into our notes. So use the snipping tool, which can be found in Windows. If you have a Windows computer, if you have a Mac, I know there's a way to do it. I just don't know it. Uh, I love Apple iPhones. I don't like any Apple computers only because when I was in grad school, Macs did not work well with uh, the software and everything that we were using. That situation is probably very different today, but I was uh, taught and raised on Windows, so I just stick with it. All right, so here we go. Here's our picture. Let's go ahead. Let's find these limits now. So in red, I'm just going to write what their answers are. <clears throat> so the first one, we are approaching zero from the left. So we're approaching zero from the left. So this looks like it's going to... Infinity. Next one. We are approaching zero from the right. So we're going this way. And if you look, it's going down here. So that's going to be negative infinity. Now let's do x. Uh, let's find a limit as x approaches one from the left. So that looks like it's going down to negative infinity. I'll write it underneath here. Start quit so you know. And then the last one, 
The limit as x approaches f of x, uh, I'm sorry, the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x, so that's coming this way. And we're going to positive infinity. All right. And that's going to be it for this part of the, uh, or for this section in terms of the book. Uh, I'm going to come back and do some more examples on how to evaluate limits at infinity. And then we're going to see how to actually do this uh, analytically using algebra and everything like that. So I hope this helps. Uh, I'll see you in the next example.